Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at any decks that have funded in the past seven days, any decks that are new to Kickstarter in the past week, and any decks that are going to be wrapping up their round of funding in the upcoming seven days. Before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring the bell. Hummingbird Feathers mimics the shimmer of a hummingbird in motion. Meticulously created with a specialized printing process, using multiple holographic foils, stunning tuck design and sculpted embossing with master letterpress creation, featuring limited standard and gilded three deck sets. Pre-order yours today at marvelousdecks.com. So we have a pretty good amount of decks this week. I think we're coming around somewhere around 12 or 13 new ones, which isn't too bad considering we've seen some weeks recently where there are 20 new decks. So ready to check these out, Steve? Let's get All into right, it. Man. Hopefully it's about a week than last we week. We <laughs> can only hope, man. So first off, let's say congratulations to all the decks that funded this week. We have the Trek deck playing cards, 52 hikes in your pocket. The Junior Hanafuda playing cards. I love that word, Hanafuda. The Phobos Volume 1 plus Glow in the Dark cover and playing cards. The Paisley Owl collector playing cards. The Sakura Playing Cards, Volume 3. The Bubblegum Playing Cards. The Breakthrough Playing Cards. Damn, that's done already? And by the time this oh. airs, the Parrot Bicycle Playing Cards, Standard and Extinct Edition. So, ending in the upcoming week, we have the Four Elements Playing Cards. The Moon and More Playing Cards. The Perceptions playing cards. The Elementia playing cards. The Vintage Label playing cards, Premier White and Reserve Black. The Your Village poker card deck. The Spade Box playing card deck acrylic display. Did you get that? And the Fallout <laughs> and Pathogen 52 playing cards. Dang, 44k. And, and the black deck. Uh, no. So first up this week, we have the Lux Hominem playing cards Phoenix campaign. So I remember this deck already to some extent. Let's see let's hmm. see real quick here because i don't remember okay the funding was canceled so this is a relaunch based on a previous campaign it looks like there's some difference between the tuck there but let's take a look at what we got bicycle branded deck what was the goal on this Seven thousand goal not too bad it's not and... bad <clears throat> and i mean three decks that's cheap for three decks. yeah yeah depending on how much they're going to be printing i guess or who they're printing with um it's a very kind of minimalist design yeah and it looks almost it reminds me kind of like sharpie like metallic sharpie and i wonder if that'll be foil or what that's actually going to look like um the one hmm. thing i will say too is i think going into the cards immediately and then going into the stories a little bit backwards there um All right i like to see the story personally i think it helps draw people in first Especially if, you know, people are uncertain on the cards, it kind of gives them a reason to say, okay, I'm not a big fan of the cards, I'm not going to go any further. You want to give people a reason sure. to get invested, so sometimes the story is a little bit better first off. Um, and it says right there, hello back, is if you go down a teeny bit, Yeah. right there, that should be at the very top. Yeah. That's the first thing you want to say. 100% agree. Introduce yourself, tell the story, like the legend, like you say, and then come into the main design, and then that's where you can stop putting your pictures of the court cards, etc. Yep. Etc. Also, the the one thing I will say here is I'm a little confused. One deck complements the other. Cold light and warm light, yin yang, and the fusion of both. Okay, so the form. Okay, hold hold on, hold on. Before we go any further, everybody, it is not called yin with a g. Yin. It is y i n. Okay, <laughs> y i n yin. Okay, continue. <laughs> so I think the formatting <laughs> that whole section is a little bit thrown off too, being that they're broken into separate lines. But again, that's just a little bit of like layout more than anything. A crown that distinguishes them. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see because I like the premise 
of this design, but again, you're just showing the same images you showed above. Right. So there, what's, so there's the Orem deck. Yeah, there's the Orem deck. There's, there's the Phrygium deck and the Kalidum deck. Okay, so there's three of them. The diamonds represents various regions. So it kind of breaks into what the suits are. Man, the suit, how come there's so many? Oh, there's like a bunch of different colors. Yeah, so I guess each each deck has a different color for different suits. Here's a blue ace of hearts. Here's a red ace of hearts. Yeah, I think depending on the deck. Yeah. Which is interesting. Jokers are... Yeah. Jokers are yeah, kind of really cool jokers, I jokers, yeah. jokers. I like that chakra joker in the middle. Yeah. Back designs are nice as well. Um, Phrygium, Orum, Calatum. So, there's, so there are three. Yep. Now... So I guess the Orium is the like the limited exclusive one or something. It's because when you it seems like it. it that must be like the yeah it's like the gold one in the middle there versus like the blue versus right. the copper. Uh, box made by Gamblers, oh, uncut sheets. Um, are they glow in the dark or something? What are those? I think that's just the uncut for the Rigium one. Yeah. Interesting color choices for a lot of this. They are very vibrant decks. Um, hmm. Other rewards. Cool shirts, merch. Some merch, cups. I dig this LED thing. That's kind of cool. Um, the LED lamp? That is kind of yeah. cool, huh? Those are cool. College stretch goals. Bicycle There's a camp. lot going on there, in this campaign. There really is. Um, the one thing I will say is I would mention earlier up top, Bicycle and Gamblers. I, d I didn't notice it in the subtitle. I'll check there in a minute. But what are we looking at for early birds here? $20 shipped for an early bird. Um, it's kind of pricey. Yeah. All right. So standard is 22 So the one thing I do want to like, I'm curious about too and just because of the way the renders are done a lot of this looks like there should be foil or at least metallic ink on them oh, there we go hmm. the box will be printed in metallic colors okay so so what's the orium yeah like what, what's the deal with the orium deck because when i'm when i looked over there for the yeah the price point the early the same, bird yeah well for the early bird for three decks it's 52 shit that's not bad. So Orium deck fancy box foiling and embossing gold and silver gilding. Oh. Is it gilded? Or does that does, does he mean foil? Because it said gold and silver gilding. Oh, I think that must be the tuck box then. Yeah, so foil on the tuck box. Yeah, it's not called gilding. That's just confusing. I mean, here's the thing. Like, while I like this deck, I think the campaign itself is very confusing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of boiling and embossing on the Aurum. Gold and silver gilding. Yeah, I'm not sure what that refers to because you wouldn't gild puck box. Bro, you know what? It, yeah, no, the, I, I think it's just gold and silver foiling, yeah. and, and that's what they meant by that's what he meant by, um, you know, gilding. It's definitely not gilded. I that LED lamp is still, <laughs> I want to find out how to get those made. <laughs> so, because I just want one. So, of them. here's the thing that I want to say, and I think this is a big hold up point for me is. Again, all of these cards look like they're either done in very vibrant metallic ink or very vibrant foil. Uh, there's no mention of like what the deck is like. Yes, it's printed by USPCC, but is it standard ink? Is it metallic ink? You mentioned metallic ink on the tuck boxes, but like the visuals to this aren't resonating with what I'm reading in this. I think that's one of the big things with it. 
think it's a very cool deck. I just need to know more information. Um, that being said, too, if it is metallic ink or foil, like that might justify the $22 price point a little bit more. Um, yeah, I'd say one thing here is maybe just throw this to someone to kind of give them a chance to look over it and proofread it because I feel like there's just a lot of information and not a lot of uh, <clears throat> not a lot of detail that's necessary to make someone you know decide to back this. So right. yeah, good luck. good luck. Next up, we luck. have the gender equitable and sustainable playing cards by Spielkoff. Spielkoff. Nice speech there, buddy. Recreates the imagery First of traditional try, card huh? game to make it gender equitable, diverse, and sustainable. Cool. Um, Spielkopf. Change your name and change the way you think. Change your game. So it looks like they've changed the way the cards work a little bit in the game. So instead of having kings or queens, you have king-queens. Oh, and they're one way back. They're one way, yeah. And then you have this former queens become officers, and you have jacks. It's pretty confusing. Yeah, I mean, I like the intention behind this, but it makes it somewhat of a non-usable deck because now your people are going to be confused all the time. Are jacks higher or lower than officers? Where do officers fall? What's a king queen? Things like this. I mean, technically, so the officers are queens, yes. correct? Or yeah, the no? officers are technically queens. But they go before, so number junior officer. So, but it goes OJQK. So in their picture, it did, but I think ultimately it would go JOQK. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, numbers, junior, officer, queen, king, queen. So they should have... Uh, replaced or swapped the o and the j there in the picture um i would have liked to no but here here's my question if it's gender gender equitable yeah. that's like gender neutral is that the same thing no gender neutral doesn't pertain to any gender specifically gender equitable means that you are equal across your usage of all genders i guess is a way to put it so like your so, like, if you have two male jacks, you would have two female jacks as well. Whereas gender neutral would just be, like, non-gender specific cards. No, nah, right, right, right. Okay, now, why, so why wouldn't it be, like, J-O or, you know, Well, well cause like what I think what they thing... did is I think two of the jacks are male, two of the jacks are female, two of the officers are male, two of the officers are female. Yeah, but why didn't they just do the same thing with the kings? Yeah, I, I, I don't know, to be honest um i guess the whole qk thing is kind of just confusing yeah yeah because the other two cards aren't like that so why again yeah. i like the intention behind this i think the execution probably could use a little tweaking um right yeah. for sure oh for sure i mean i think the idea anything that is you know, kind of outside the box is uh is yeah good. well and i think the other thing too is the okay so it explains gender equitable here i think why the different pictures portion of it should be farther up towards the top i like the little jokers right. too. i think they're cool um what are we looking at price point i love the i love the artwork on it i think it's dope the artwork is super dope i love the um how they're not race specific either i, I really dig okay. that um two uh what is it twenty dollars ship for the deck not bad um yeah, it's not bad I at would all. Like, What's the back design yeah, look like? I'd like so, to yeah, see I'd that. like to know what the back design is. I'd also like to know who's printing it and who's fulfilling it. Maybe the video has something about the back design. Crowdfunding campaign in Germany. So you already know where to print the cards. Since we have worked previously with the camp company, there is a risk of production by the production of English. It looks like they're fulfilling it, but it doesn't say anything. Yeah, else. and I didn't see the back design in the quick scrub through the video. Um I think it's definitely an interesting premise, and the price point's not bad for the deck as long as it's created at a you know a reputable printer that we would know or enjoy. Like, it does look like the cards have a weird shape to them. Yeah, though, yeah? they kind of remind me of kind of like a tarot yeah, deck. Yeah, they're like very a, rounded. Kind of like a poker sized tarot deck. Yeah, they could also be these are renders maybe 
but oh yeah, yeah it's possible for all right, so what was the goal on this too 5800 5, yeah 5800 listen good luck i think they, luck. i think there needs to be a little bit more information you know more pictures back design uh printer fulfillment even if it's self fulfillment throw it in there price point though is not bad at all so good luck with the campaign i like the uh, i like the idea behind it yeah i i, I agree just to, okay. yeah next up we have balloon playing cards uh 7500 gold nine backers 30 days all right uh graffiti is malleable it can be seen in sky for yr form of oh, okay so story out the gate awesome um world with balloon is a series of stencil right. mirrors created by graffiti artist fans thanks uh, so hit here's the thing with uh we actually talked about this um and as far as i know i mean you can look in the the video because there's no yeah. pictures anymore right it's just the video um you can see the back design and that it, that is a banksy image it's a dope trailer i'm not gonna lie but yeah that is a uh that is a banksy image which I think the back design is really cool. Here's my thing, and here's both of my things, I'm sure, is, uh, you know, we've talked about it, is, you know, do you have rights to do this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there definitely needs to be a licensing. It raises a licensing concern. Um, obviously, yeah. graffiti artists or not, this is copyrighted work that belongs to Banksy. Um, right. That being said, it looks like influenced by artists shocked that this art has yeah no i mean he's basically just i'm shocked that this art has not been previously used in the card community one motivation behind using girl with balloon was to preserve its notoriety yeah i mean yeah like uh, i think this is something that we've seen in the past where like and i don't think this was maliciously done but art is protected there needs to be either a license agreement to use it and to reproduce it Otherwise, it's infringing upon the original artist's, you know, copyright over his work. I wouldn't be surprised if that's, you know, maybe part of the reason there are no images. But that being said, from the campaign right. point of view, there need to be images. You need to be able to show what the deck looks like. I don't know if it's a standard deck with a different back design or what the deal is there. Um, price point. Yeah. I mean, I could see the, the picture um, of the deck in yeah. the video. But, like, it's not... Yeah. A minute and twenty five seconds, you can see the back design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right I'm there. I'm curious what the like the faces and everything look like then. Like, is this the? Yeah, no, for for sure. I I just think it would have been a lot cooler to see kind of like, um, an, an inspired by type deck rather than using his image off of it. You know, because it has. I, I think it looks really cool. If it just wasn't his yeah. image, it, it would be really uh, a cool deck. Absolutely. But, um. um... Yeah, and listen, I think that trailer really is amazingly done. So kudos on that one, but I think this might end up having to go back to the drawing board. Uh, what were we looking at for price point on this? Standard price point was $23. Again, kind of high for what it is based off the little information that we could see. But faces, courts, we want to know what all those look like. Even if they're standard and then you have a standard back design there, that really should be closer to maybe like the $16, $17 price point shift. Um if this was a licensed deck, it could justify the price point being a little bit higher, but I still think 23 shift is a bit high. Um, I do see that it's going to be printed by USPCC. I think that's great. Definitely think about using their um, logo and everything. The other aspect to this, though, too, is submit your artwork to USPCC to make sure it gets, you know, approval. Because I'm sure they, yeah. Yeah, oh. they may raise a, a copyright issue as well with this. Also, if you look at the pledges on the right... Um... There's way too much information in there. I don't, like that should be in the body of the the campaign yeah. rather than like for instance, pledge you know for the magician's choice pledge. It says deck of balloon playing cards printed by USPCC on premium card stock with embossed finish, and then it goes all yeah like on and on. There's like a ton of information there that I don't even care about. Yeah, this about should definitely be in the for campaign each itself. Different. Yeah. 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 Well, definitely, uh, I would look over this if I was Aaron. Um, yeah. Aaron, Aaron yeah. good luck, man. Um, but again, yeah, I would definitely, if I were you, if you want to continue with this one, I would definitely get the licensing issue addressed for the artwork because it is a dope looking design. I think there's a lot of potential with it. So good luck, man. Yeah. I mean, that might, that might be why there's only nine backers yeah. as well. Next up, we have the Dex Yellow Diamond playing cards from Joe Piper. 
Joe Piper. So text was created to bring playing card ideas I wanted to life. Cool. I like the images. So it's a relatively, you know, minimal casino style deck, I guess. I like the black and yellow. Again, we've seen a lot of black and yellow designs recently. I think they pop so well. Um, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> soon we have a week where there are no black and yellow decks and I can hear Steve not so whiskily foot to me. But no, I, I like the jokers on this. I know you're not a fan of like that skull slash, you know, zombie style, but I think these are kind of cool. Um, Sterling edition looks dope. What are we looking at price point? I mean, that's a cool, that's a cool... I like that that joker. It's really not. I mean, it's a skull, but it's not a skull. Yeah. You know? yeah that shipping kind of like a shipping pill, hits it a little, a little bit. bit. Uh, twenty three shipped. So the one thing I would say on this one is, if you are not, oh, yes, yeah, he gamblers. UK orders will be filled like yeah. Okay. So that price point just oh, printed in the UK. So I'm curious who the printer is going to be. Um, I think it's going to be licorice. So maybe? that's one of the things that I am curious about recently. I've had the opportunity to play with some licorice press decks. I was not thoroughly impressed fresh out the box. I'm sure over time they may work in a little bit better, but I did notice that they were a little oddly grippy. And, uh, oh, here we go. Someone completely different. I yeah. agree. So ivory graphics. So, yeah. I'm, I don't want to say I'm leery to try new playing card companies because I think it's always beneficial to, but at a higher price point, like that makes it a little difficult on my end. Um, if you're willing to try a smaller printer to try and get a new feel out there, then to me, you're probably better off coming in at a sub $20 price point ship just because people are going to be more likely to back it without knowing what the cards feel like. I think a lot of people when their main purpose is to use the cards they want to know what it's going to feel like and that's going to be reliable and long long lasting especially at a 23 dollars price point right that being said uh yep risks include printing them with a lesser known printing company as customers are used to and trust card and money in USPC. okay and like i think that's great on you joe for like knowing uh the potential risk there you know although they have many large corporate clients they've also made custom cards for pen and teller cool I would love to like see what these cards feel like, and I think that's maybe something that should have been touched on within the campaign itself. Um, like I think going into more detail about how the cards feel and why you went with Ivory more so than just like the paragraph here, I think that would waylay a lot of concerns that people may have with a relatively unknown printer. Okay. But so there's four different how many there's four different top yes. decks yeah. yeah so there's the black there's the black there's the yellow like the black and yellow the, the black Shaolin, there's the, the sterling orange. and the un and the why am i only seeing three on the thing here though yellow Shaolin, sterling so we got this Sterling, Shaolin, Yellow, and then we got that Skeletron. Skeletron. Oh. There will be one special deck, Skeletron, available as a okay. gift. It was a personal project. I'm sure. I, I, I mean, listen, cool. I'm a big fan of He-Man and, you know, Masters of the Universe, so I dig that Skeletron <laughs> deck. But, um, yeah, I think all things considered, the price point is the one holdup for me. That and trying to give more assurance of the print quality. Um as i mentioned i think it's great that people use new printers but there's always the risk that the cards are not going to feel as great like i mentioned as well just the fact that like licorice press which is getting new you know usage just wasn't what i expected and i think you know paying a higher price point for a deck of cards that you're not sure how they're going to feel is always a risk um that being said good luck to you joe i dig the deck i hope that uh yeah, i hope that you can put a little more information up there to kind of explain why you decided to go with ivory no well, yeah good exactly. luck man. good luck joe Pipette. next up we have um spring spring yeah we got here by wonder yeah. interesting looks like a relatively uh minimalist design definitely a cardistry deck 52 wonders yeah huh? Yeah. Down here. The springs are designed by Red Dot Design Award winner Laeda Studio. Together with 50 Wonders, Spring Decks brought to you. 
this clip. This clip. All right. So, I again, I know that Fifty Two Wonders is German based. I would definitely say if you're going to push for a U.S. Uh, English based campaign. Definitely get someone to just double check the grammar and proofreading on it because these last two sentences don't necessarily make a ton of sense. Um, but otherwise, interesting looking deck printed by Cardamundi on their B9 Slimline. I think that's awesome. I love Slimline. Uh, includes a tutorial. Very cool. It's definitely, I mean, it's definitely a cardistry design deck. It's got a good look to it. Relatively standard. I like the four, the the four decks. If you go up the the four decks yeah. together, that like right there, that would look dope in that four deck frame. I yeah. think it is. Yeah, that diamond shaped frame. The diamond yeah. shaped frame. That's that look kind of. Yeah, courts look good. All relatively standard. Uncut sheets, pretty trippy looking. Um, I dig those. Those colors are really cool. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I dig it. That uncut. See dope. now, I'm a little confused though by like. Yeah, What's that? Like, why is there just this random like? Oh, that's that's one of their old. Like, was that left in there by accident or like? Oh, you know what? It might like, have been. That's Let's where. See. Yeah. Design violence. First deck of the series is available in the in this campaign with in. Oh, uh, you can. Okay, it's an add on okay. or something. So. Yeah, it's an add on, but it's in a it weird spot. It is in a spot. weird spot. Um. I mean, if nothing else, put the add-on header above and kind of do a little bit more explanation around the fact that if you want this deck, you can add it on. Um, right. Yeah, because... I mean, the early bird special is not bad. It comes in at 18 shipped, which... Isn't yeah, it really bad isn't bad. Um, what are you looking at for the normal? And then we have uh, 19. 19, so it's only a Yeah, buck. so again, I think that $2 difference makes a little bit more of a benefit there. Get, gets a little more momentum behind the early bird backing. But... Yeah. Otherwise, again, I think the biggest thing here is just getting someone to proofread everything so that you're sure that everything makes sense. Um, the flow's not too bad. The images are good. They have pictures of what they need. I would have liked to see a little bit more of the yeah. face cards because in reality, all you have, though they're standard and just recolored, all you have are these four here. It would have been fun to see a little bit more. Um, yeah, but otherwise, fulfilled by gamblers, printed by Cardamundi. I would have liked to see that up top as well. I think it would have been a little bit more helpful farther up towards the top, but yeah, good yeah. luck, guys. Next up, we have the Shadows playing cards, Depression Awareness deck. I love yeah, the Rorschach test there on the back. The purpose behind yeah. this deck is cool. Yeah, and the Rorschach looks awesome. I think this is a, yeah. it's a dope looking deck altogether. I like that there's the little faces yeah. with it. I would just like to see that. I'd like to see it in like different colors rather than just a black and white, yeah. you know. Uh, Even though it's cool. printed by Hanson oh, Chen, shipped by Dane Valnez, international will be fulfilled by HCPC. Awesome. For, right out the gate. Yeah, Chen, Chen, right yeah. out the gate, we know who's going to be backing and printing or fulfilling and printing. I think that's perfect. Um, awareness PCC. What else have they created? Okay. So. I like how they go into depression a little bit, give uh, some hotlines. Yeah, no, the information is definitely a lot of the rejected ideas coming to the final choice. I like, they definitely give anyway. a, a detailed story. I like the talk. Um, interesting number cards. I like the fact that the whole thing has a very, like, watercolor feel to it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Definitely dark. Yeah. Um, I assume the picture, the court cards are people that are. Oh yeah, yeah. Xavier Spade. You got Stu right there. Yeah. Tomlin, RJ, Emily, Chris, and Penny, Daniel Matt. So it's been pretty much a Madisonist. Yeah. That crew. One deck, $18, though. Can't go wrong at that price point for a deck that looks like this. So, nicely done. Did you say Stu was in there? Stu is 
Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> King cool. of clubs. King of clubs. Yeah, two two decks for thirty dollars. That's really not bad. Like this is kind of a high goal, though. Twelve grand for the goal is pretty high. Yeah, that is a bit high. Um, I mean, hey, hopefully they hit it. I think the deck's got a great message behind it. I think the artwork is phenomenal. I like the style of it all together, and I think the price point per deck is spot on. Uh, I think the information yeah. being close to the top did perfect there. I think this is a very well put together campaign. So good luck, awareness, PCC. You guys crush it here. Next up, we have the Tale of the, the Tempest Tale playing the cards. Tempest. Dude, need we say more? I mean, 95k, low trek, and gentleman yeah. wake. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, there's really not much. You know, I mean, it would have been cool to to see at the top. I guess it was fulfilling, and and uh, I mean, we already know who's printing it. Um, but I mean, this, this deck is so beautiful. Yeah. We know the deck's going to be printed. Um, by Katamundi, actually, it says it. Designed by Low Trek. Um, you see fulfillment. Expert design by Low Trek. Act artfully printed by Katamundi. Um, I know. B nine. Someone. Yeah. Yeah, I do not see. I know they just mentioned EU fulfillment on the bottom, but I'm not sure who they had in it. Let's see. Midnight Edition stretch goal with that foil on the back looks phenomenal. Um, so nice. Very vibrant tuck boxes. Love the little detail shown here. Great stretch goals. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say who. Yeah, again, that, that is definitely the one thing I would like to see is who fulfillment is going to be, especially because... New EU friendly fulfillment, no customs. So, with that in mind, mentioning who's going to be fulfilling, I don't, I don't right. see gamblers. I don't see, yeah, I don't see a listing of any of the ones I'm used to. So, yeah, I don't see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Either way, though. Great looking deck. I think the price point on this is phenomenal as well. You're looking at crushed. Yeah, it. yeah. No, absolutely crushed on this one. And of course, Gentleman Wake does a great job with his campaign. So, yeah, I mean, sixteen each for. Um, yeah, really well designed foil tuck, beautiful deck. For the ocean and the dusk, and then you have twenty one for the midnight. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Good luck, man. Next up, we have the possible deck. Well, I can't read it. Printed by TWPCC. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you, listen, whether I can read this or not, I'll tell you right now, there aren't enough pictures of the cards. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is also where images for your fulfillment and printing transcend language barriers. So always a great idea. This is only for Japan also. Oh, it's only shipping to Japan? It's only, a, it's only yeah, for Japan. That. Yeah, so that would... But either way, it would be cool to see more pictures, to see what... Um... $20 shipped. Yeah. Good luck. In Japan. Good luck possible deck. Next up, we have the 12 Days of Christmas playing cards. Tommy. I'd say it's pretty much impossible, if you ask me. I mean, hey, they may fund. We'll see. We won't know, though. Um, next up, yep. we have the 12 Days of Christmas playing cards, USPCC, comma, deck idea. Um, playing cards inspired by the famous 12 Christmas, famous Christmas song. We love Jason. We do. I would say, though, Jason, pull the USPCC out of the title. If you're going to use it, put it in the subtitle. I always think there's a point of confusion there when you say, you know, yeah. USPCC. USPCC isn't necessarily involved in the project outside of the printer of it. They're not backing or driving the campaign itself. Um, but I can say right now I love this deck. So, uh, oh, It's yeah. awesome. Here's my only problem. I have one problem. Colors. 
Where's the Where's the Hanukkah uh, deck? Well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm maybe just that's kidding. a stretch goal, Steve. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of I mean, listen, Jason always does a really good job with his campaigns. Very, um, very thorough in his build out. I think after his serpent deck, he learned how to properly navigate stretch goals as well. Love these renders. Yeah, we look at it. They look great. I mean, this deck's awesome. Uh, you don't have to. Fulfillment by Murphy's. Uh, nice. Yeah, he definitely wasn't a big fan of the gambler's side on his last campaign so and this is one thing i would say though uh probably work on getting uspcc and murphy's closer to the top while there's a lot of images um he definitely is always stacked with images yeah, and... the, the text is a little short for me though that's the one thing like the concept it's based on the 12 days of christmas song where each of the jack queen king represent one day of christmas cool but like i'd like to have that broadened out a little bit more because it's like nine pictures there before you get to the next block of text and it's the song. Nothing wrong with that. And you don't have to put so many pictures of the back design and so many pictures yeah. of the ace. Like definitely less uh, pictures uh, or if you want to use a lot of pictures, just make the, the pictures more uh, kind of different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like this whole features like thing. The the bottom, there's the pledge and add-ons and the add-ons are in the, the right section. You know, the... He adds the the sandwich deck. Yeah. Down there. yeah. Um. Yeah. I definitely wish this printed by USPCC with premium stock and the Murphys was a little bit higher up, just because again, there's a lot of pictures to get to that point. But I think it looks good, man. What are we looking at price point wise? Uh, we are looking at ooh, twenty six bucks shipped. No, oh wait, no, no. so that's the, the green. The green standard is nineteen shipped. Right. Okay. So what's the? Why is that? Yeah. The deluxe red though. Nineteen shipped. Deluxe red is 26 ships. Yeah, and like, yeah, there's some foil on it. It's limited. That's a lot. It's still a, it's still a, a $20. How many, how many are there of that? 1,200. So why is there, all right, so there's only, there, this has a limit. It says a limit of 17 on it, which I don't understand. That's why is there only seven? Just for the single deck, because you probably limited it based on trying to get more people into the other tiers where there's 113 available or for the t double tier, which has eight. So that's just playing the tiers so that he has enough to not go over that 1,200. I mean, I, I would pull some out of the doubles and add some more into the singles. Cause... I just still think $26 is a lot for the variation there. For sure. Um, for sure. It's a good-looking deck either way, but ultimately, like, I don't necessarily know if some, some foiling on the tuck doesn't in my book, bring it up seven dollars in value. So, yeah, but I, I, I mean, yeah, I dig the decade so away, but that's a lot. Yeah, no, but I mean, crushed yeah. it. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, Jason. Next up, we have the fractal cards. These. Let's see. Two face cards for a 60 card deck. Oof. Adds the princess and the duke. Mm hmm. King, queen, jack, princess. It doesn't have any pictures. It just shows those pictures and then yeah. what you're getting into. Yeah, so again, this is where like you're going to try and change a concept that's pretty inherent to the game. It's worthwhile to put pictures in. $11 shit. That's cheap. That's for sure. Yeah, but who's printing? <laughs> Who's fulfilling? Yeah, um, let's see. They're just, I mean, the the text is pretty small, and this is where we were talking about where you put images in. We were talking about this. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to put images in, just make sure that your font is at a good uh, size so it's easy, uh, easily readable. See, yeah, to me, this, is, uh, this right here is a big red flag. Third-party manufacturer is being compared to give the best quality cards and a reasonable delivery time. During November, the card manufacturer will be decided and sample decks will be reviewed for quality. I wouldn't back this until you told me who the printer is going to be. Because if you, if I was under the okay. assumption it was going to be someone like Cardamundi or USPCC, and then all of a sudden you tell me it's going to be NPCC or Legends, I completely would change my mind on whether or not I would back this. I think that's a big, big kind of information point that has to be decided from the jump um 
Yeah, especially it says expected lead time is six to eight weeks after production. Yeah. 5,000 quantity lead time, maybe up to six months. Yeah, so like you have very flexible timelines here because you're basically saying you don't know how many you're going to print. You don't know who you're going to print with. To me, this is very early stage. And it's something we've talked about a lot recently. How are you actually going to get... Let me, before I even get into what we've talked about a lot, how are you going to give a quote on what you think a deck of cards is going to cost before you've even gotten a quote from who you want to print with? And, and if you look at the very top, the very first image at the very top yeah. in the background, it says two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Jack, queen, king, ace. And then in the pictures, it has the prince and the duke. I mean, the princess and the duke. Yeah. So that's not very. Yeah, I mean, good luck, man. Yeah, I think there's a lot of open questions here. I would definitely say just for your sake, Thomas. Also, oh, it has the standard 52 and then the eight special princess yeah. and duke. Yeah, I got that it. That being said, though, still, Thomas, I think there's a lot of open questions where maybe you, you may have rushed the campaign prior to having all of your details worked out. It's not a great way to do it because it ends up leading to very, very long fulfillment times and a lot of potential issues throughout the fulfillment and printing process. My best recommendation for you here would be to cancel this one, get the details figured out, get this back up with all the necessary information, so that people can decide whether or not this is a deck for them based on who the printer is, who's going to be fulfilling, and what the actual timeline is. So, yeah. Good luck. Next up we have... Umbra. Ah, TNY micro playing cards. Oh, I, dude, they were so small I didn't even there see them. There <laughs> So, <laughs> these are tiny playing cards. I dig the back design. Dude, super simple. Yeah. I actually dig it. It reminds me of like eye catcher or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are These tiny. Are, yeah, geez, the size of two quarters. That's crazy. I mean, who's who are they for? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a new take, I guess, on like a travel deck. I mean, come on. Still possible to riffle shuffle. <laughs> you call that a riffle shuffle? <laughs> I love it. That's not a riffle shuffle. I love it. Um. <laughs> Eleven ninety nine. I mean, listen, this is a interesting gimmick deck. Um, There's your timeline, buddy. Yeah, nine dollars shipped. If this is your jam, it's a cool looking deck. I'd like to see the rest of the cards, other than the, just the aces. I'm curious what the rest of it looks like. If it's similar in style, just hey, uh, I'm not sure why there's the lines through the diamonds and the hearts, but completely waterproof, so they're plastic cards. Um, yeah. Not a bad deal. If these are your thing, it's cool. Oh, there we go. It shows kind of the rest of them here. I'm still curious about the line through the diamonds in the heart. So Elk Lab, feel free to let us know what's up with that. But yeah, cool. Good luck. Yeah. Now we on to Umbra. Umbra playing cards inspired by Norse mythology from Jody Eklund. The egg. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jody crushes dude's all the time. Yeah, dude's going to crush it here. It's funny because he's normally prints initially with NPC NPCC with the stretch goal being legends. I prefer NPCC over legends. So to me, like that's always a bit of a bummer. I find that legends yeah. doesn't handle as well out the box as NPCC. But again, personal preference there. Ah, uh, good looking deck. The style of that luxury edition one kind of reminds me of the Kickstarter edition of the. Uh, what was his deck from last year that I'm completely blanking on now? Um, I'll tell you. Give me two seconds. If you know it before <laughs> Steve gets it, comment below. Let me know what the name of the deck I can't remember is right now. Luminosity. Luminosity. Yeah, Luminosity. There you go. Um, <laughs> it's a good looking deck. I have to say, too, I'm still waiting on Sovereign to get fulfilled. And while Jody is a well-known name within the community... I still would like to see Sovereign because I think that's going to be a sick looking deck. And also it's one that he went with USPCC with. So see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one thing, you know, whether you're uh, a designer that's had multiple, multiple campaigns under your belt. I mean, I, I highly recommend just fulfilling your previous campaigns before you put out another one. It's just it just looks better. Yeah, I mean, and I think part of the issue, too, is we're getting to that time of year where uh, that last minute rush before the Christmas season comes into play. 
So I think this is where a lot of designers who probably normally would wait till the previous one fulfilled with all the COVID delays, it may be that he's just kind of putting this one in so that he can, uh, so that he can get his, uh, this deck fulfilled for Christmas, before Christmas. That copper gilding there looks amazing. On that Umbra Noir edition, that looks good, man. What are we looking at price point yeah. on this? Uh, we are looking at 21 shipped. 21. Luxury yeah. is 26 shipped. It's really not bad for the luxury. I'm curious what the gilded would be. But So what's what's the difference with the luxury? Does it have foil on it? Um two um uh, a pair of standard. Yeah, it looks like it. The Noir luxury Opera Noir. Yeah, foil on the back for the luxury noir edition. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's not bad. I mean 26 shipped. And then you have Brick of the Standard, Half Brick, Umbra Collection. So can you not get the Gilded? How do you get the Gilded? It may be an add-on. Um, Luxury Gilded it. Edition exclusive. Um, Doesn't say, huh? Combining Stretch Gold number three and four, the signed edition will be in a special packaging. So it's a uh, Stretch Gold. So it probably becomes available at a certain point. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now listen, I think this is a dope looking campaign. I'm always curious as to... Beautiful What's up? Beautiful yeah. deck. I'm always curious as to the use of Backer Kit on this. So Jody, if you see this and you recommend Backer Kit, I know you use it a lot. I'm curious as to why, what your thoughts are, if it really just saves that much time on it. But yeah, good luck on the campaign. You already crushed it. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one and how well it does. Jody, Jody. Next up, we have the Cyan Playing Cards by Playing Cards Company. All right. Uh, Into by USPCC, fulfilled by Gambler's Warehouse. Perfect on that subtitle there. Um, pretty high goal out the gate. Very this, high. What I'm assuming is a single deck. Just looking at this, it may be that there's two decks. We'll have to take a look, but... Um, Port us, faces... I mean, twelve coming in at twelve shipped isn't bad. <laughs> no, but that makes it for a stretch goals. So here's what stretch. So you have a stretch goal before your funding goal, though. Interesting. So maybe it was a mistake in the funding goal or a mistake in the stretch goal. That's one thing I'd be curious about. Um, I do twelve dollars shipped is a great price point if you're into this deck. Um, it's a relatively minimalistic deck. It's not bad looking. Good workers deck, I guess, for what it is. Printed by... USPCC. Yeah, fulfilled by Gamblers. Got the information right there with the images. I would like to see more images of the deck in general, even if it is standard. Um, so yeah, definitely the, the order is a little off. I, I think I'd like to see the order a little... Yeah, a little more cohesive. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to find like why you should why you, should you support us? I think that should be kind of at the end. You know, I'd like to see that not before I see the cod like the faces of the cods. You so know? I, I could see yes or no. I could see if you change the title of it to like the story of the deck because to, to me the why you should support us in this portion of it kind of tells the story of the deck. They're looking to create a, a low price reasonable deck. But, like, the why you should support this title maybe is a little confusing on it, you know? Yeah, that's probably what it is. I, and I would, like, shorten that a little bit. It doesn't need to be that long. Um, I'm, but So the other thing I'm not seeing, oh, I guess, okay. If I am playing cards, will sell on Kickstarter for $6, with decks getting cheaper as the order gets larger. All right, so I guess that's just with the... Uh, uh, conversion rate showing up as about seven dollars, so probably six dollars and change. Right. I mean, two decks is nineteen bucks shipped. That. Yeah, that's really not bad at all. What we got for a, a brick? We're looking at ninety-two for a brick. Yeah, I mean that's cheap. Yeah. I mean, if this is your thing, go for yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you're looking for a reasonable price workers deck, this is definitely it. 
but I would say, yeah, a little bit more on the face cards and a little bit more maybe on the the titles, but it looks good otherwise. So keeping keeping it minimal, same as the cards, not a bad approach. Um, yeah, good luck. And Steve, that is the end of it. The end, huh? Back in this week, my man. Well, Tyler, Mr. Lumberjack, um, I would back 100% Tell the Tempest. Um, if I was into cardistry, I'd back Go Up. I'd back that uh, the Springs playing cards. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and then go down. The Tempest. And if I wasn't Jewish, I'd back the Christmas deck. And uh, I, I really, really love the, the Umbra. Umbra, Umbra, however you say it. Um, I mean, it's just beautiful. Yeah. I think that's that's what I'd tackle this week. What about you? I, I like the Lux Hominem. I'm just a little standoffish about it. I think it's a solid one. I definitely agree with you on the Tale of the Tempest. 100% would back that. Um, I'd back 12 Days of Christmas. I think it looks good. And I would also back the Umbra playing cards as well. I wish they were maybe on USPCC instead of Legends, but again, being a collector's deck, I understand why they're on Legends. Yeah. So I can't really be too, you know, upset by that. But yeah, no, I think, listen, there was some interesting decks this week. I think quality-wise, there was definitely a lot more um, a lot more solid decks than we usually see, which I think is awesome. I definitely think there were some campaigns that just have to reconsider some crucial aspects of it, like giving more information, yeah. showing the cards, considering licensing, things like that. But otherwise, I think this was all together a pretty good week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we would love to know what you guys would back. Uh, leave it in the comments. Let us know if... You think that we made some good choices? That'd be cool to see. Yeah, we're always interested to see what you guys like to back, though. I mean, this is pretty much what well, I mean. We agreed pretty much on every deck, yeah. other than maybe the hominem. Yeah. yeah, and I wouldn't go for the springs just because, as much as it's not a bad looking deck, I think it's a little too simple for me. But that's perfectly fine. Again, to each their own, yeah. and that's the great thing about playing cards <laughs> is there is really a deck for everyone. And just because someone doesn't like the same decks as you doesn't really mean anything we all have different tastes and i think that's an amazing part about this hobby so yeah definitely let us know below though what decks you're planning on backing this week and why which decks you do like which ones you don't and if anyone's looking to get their campaigns reviewed ahead of time feel free to drop us a message on instagram at deck and around send us a dm hummingbird feathers mimics the shimmer of a hummingbird in motion meticulously created with a specialized printing process using multiple holographic foils Stunning tuck design and sculpted embossing with master letterpress creation. Featuring limited, standard, and gilded three-deck sets. Pre-order yours today at MarvelousDecks.com. Thanks, everyone, so much. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We'll see you next week for another Kickstarter recap. Peace. Bye.